My house smells of chicken soup and matzo balls. And this afternoon, it will smell of rugala. I'm grandmothering myself, surrounded by the women who made me. I feel my grandmother strengthen my hands as I knead the dough. <laughs> my Aunt Rosa winds yarn on my outstretched arms and then not so patiently teaches me how to knit evenly. My mother is all around me, telling me to stay safe, stay home, and to read a book. Her advice whenever I whine about being bored. I am talking to my mother-in-law in my head. She says she appreciates my humor, the fact that we finally connected. Stop the world, I want to get off, was her reaction to even minor infractions. I can only imagine what she'd say now. They are here, bustling around my head, reminding me of the strength each in her own way had to face in a much more difficult situation than I find myself. And as difficult as it may be to stay at home without being able to hug or kiss my children or grandchildren, I need them. I need my grandmother, who lived with the knowledge that most of her family had been murdered, who hugged and consoled me through a stupid and selfish adolescence. I need my Aunt Rosa, the one who was destitute and lived on the charity of family, who always had time for me in the talking of olden times while we would knit. My Aunt Shandel, who told me never to buy an item of clothing that had black in it for my children. Black was a sad color for children, bad luck. She's here too, reminding me that the soup won't be the same without a parsnip. I can risk coronavirus for a parsnip, I tell her. She sighs. And my mother, always with me, my beautiful and glamorous mother who once turned down Errol Flynn and had a song for everything. I welcome them all into my kitchen and I listen.